By now, folks, I'm sure you've seen all the announcements all over the place, possibly even in my own blog, about On One's new product, uh, Perfect Layers. Perfect Layers basically allows you to create layered files from Lightroom without having to go through Photoshop or another program. Now obviously it is acting as an external editor, it's making rendered versions of the files, but it does provide a little bit of convenience for certain things like head swaps or adding texture or things like that. So I'm going to do a quick texture thing here, with two images selected, and we can see that they're slightly different sizes as well, which is going to help uh, later on just show some of the other tools that are in perfect layer. So I'm going to select the tool, then go to File, and I'm going to go to Plugin Extras and select Perfect Layers from the list. This will now create rendered versions of these two files, which will then open in Perfect Layers. Um, it's obviously going to take a finite amount of time to create rendered versions of the files for us to use. So, basically, I am letting you see exactly what's happening. Uh, this is actually a public preview. So, you can see that it's open in the background. So, we now we can see that. Now, I deliberately had Perfect Layers open in the background to make this quicker. So we can see we've got the two layers built in here. Now this is a public preview, so it's not the full version yet. So obviously there's still bugs and there's still things that need to be done with it. But for what it is, it works really well. Alright, so what we have here is the two layers. And we can see that the layer on top is our texture layer. So we can turn it on and off from there. And you can also use things like opacity to change the opacity of it, and all those kind of things. But what I want to do here is I'm going to start off by making this big enough to fit the whole thing. Now, if this was Photoshop, if you held the Shift key or the Option key, you'd be able to do a certain amount of constraining. But with this one, they don't seem to do either. So I'm just going to drag across here and off. Now, I wish there was a way that I could drag it more down and stuff like that, but I'm not sure if I can with the view. Um, zoom out. But let me, it will. That's grand. Okay. So I'm finding things too as well. So that way I can actually make this have the texture exactly where I want it. Okay, so that's done. So the next thing I want to do is I want to figure out what's the best blending mode to blend these two together. So I come over to where it says blending. And as I hover over each one, you can see what it does. So there's no having to select the actual blending mode and then apply it before we see what it is. Now I'm looking through these here. Um, lighten isn't great. Darken isn't great. Screen is too bright. Multiply is good. Overlay is a bit too saturated. Soft light is a bit flat in comparison. Uh, hard light is too much. And color, we don't want to black and white with bits. I think of all of them, multiply was the best. So I'm going to click multiply. So what I want to do is I want to mask away uh, around the body, and keep it around the, the church area and things like that. So I'm going to click on the brush tool. Um, we have a couple of different options with our brush sizes. Um, well, with the brush, you've got brush size, feather, and opacity. So that's how big the brush is, how hard the edge is and how soft or like how visible the brush is. In this case I'm going to leave it at 100 because I do want to get rid of all of the texture. And paint in uh, is not what we want to do, we want to paint out because we want the layer to go away. So I've got a small brush and I'm just going to paint around the edges very quickly and then I'm going to come back in with a larger brush and paint around the center. So I'm trying to be reasonably accurate but I'm trying to be fast at the same time because I know you don't want to get bored watching this. Okay, that seems to be most of that. So, again, the square bracket keys work uh, the same as they would in Photoshop or in Lightroom for brushes. Um, so, just make it a little bit bigger. Try and get over large areas quickly. Okay, and bring it down, down, down. Okay, right. Now, if you want to actually see the mask. We have an option here. Now I have to be careful because there is a thing sometimes when I move across here it actually paints the mask there even though in actual fact we haven't painted there and it didn't do it this time fortunately. But I've gone too far on the edges so I'm going to click paint in. I'm just going to paint in there where I've got too much and then I'm going to go paint out again so I can just paint in around where the actual mask wasn't painted fully the last time. Just in the back. I'm not too worried about around the hair because the hair edges are kind of fly away. Okay. And I'm just going to point and I'm going to lift away. Grand. So now I'm going to show none. Okay. So that's basically my shot without it. So I'm happy with that. So I'm now going to go File, Save. And Perfect Layers is then going to save the file <coughs> onto the disk. But because I'm working from a collection, it's not, they're not going to appear in the collection. 
then we're going to appear in the directory with the first layered file. So I'll show you how to deal with that once we know that it's saved. We can see also that it's saving as a PSD file there. Okay. So we now go back to Lightroom. I'm going to right click on this image. First of all, I'm going to click in the air border around the image just to have that image selected. And right click and go to folder in library. All right. So we can hear, see here now that <coughs> our texture file has appeared beside the original file in library. We do have a little exclamation mark warning here. So if we click that, it says the metadata for this photo has been changed by both Lightroom and another application. Um, in this case, we know the last program we used was Perfect Layer. So I'm going to import settings from disk. And that should hopefully update our metadata. It's taken a little bit to read it, and there we go. So now if we just double click into loop view, we can now see our textured file as we created in perfect layers. So that's just kind of a quick overview of perfect layers. All right.